Hello, it is Tuesday, June 4th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Tuesday puzzle, which means it shouldn't be too difficult, and I'm hoping that's the case because I'm going to try and solve this crossword slightly expeditiously today because I don't have uh, an enormous amount of time. And um, I suppose this slightly expeditious edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Jake Rodkin, Michael H., and, as always, the inestimable Hood Monster and the invaluable Timothy Mark. So thank you so much to the four of them, benefactors of the Daily Self Patreon campaign, for directly supporting this channel and making it a sustainable part of my daily work. I do very much appreciate that, and I appreciate the contributions of everybody who has contributed to the Patreon campaign. So thank you to all patrons out there, um, regardless of your level or, uh, I don't know, duration of patronage, I suppose. Um, I do very much appreciate it. And if you'd like to join their ranks, you can do so at patreon.com slash daily solve. And there you can find all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. And um, you can subscribe to the channel on YouTube, of course, if you've been enjoying these and you'd like to see them in your feed more often. Thank you to everybody who's done that as well. And finally, you can join the Daily Solve Discord chat community, where other viewers of this channel um, reside for bits of their bits of their day. And you, there's an extra channel on there if you're a Patreon subscriber, but other than that, it's free for everybody to join. And it's a nice, welcoming place. And now let's get on to the puzzle. This is a debut construction by Robert Wan, uh, first puzzle for the New York Times, and it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So we'll have some sort of theme today. It is We're still in the themed part of the week, so we'll have to see what's in store. Let's start solving. Hot dish that sounds cold. Oh, I don't know. This is probably the kind of thing that some people would think of immediately, but I am not doing so. Let's check the downs. A uh, taxi could be a cab. 2001, a space odyssey antagonist. That would be the uh, artificial intelligence computer, HAL, I think. I say I think because this is a surprising... Ah, uh, no, it's not. Composer Copeland would be Aaron Copeland, the American composer. Uh, I thought those two A's were surprising, but in, in a name, they're perfectly valid. Nest egg letters. So a nest egg could refer to your savings, and this could refer to uh, an IRA, an individual retirement account, which is a U.S. tax-advantaged investment instrument. Okay, blank citato in the passage quoted... Now, I should probably know this. Is this used in music or is maybe not? Maybe it's not used in music. Um, so, if, <laughs> in which case, I'm less likely to know it. Uh, okay. Oh, hot dish that sounds cold is chili, of course. I probably, that, <laughs> indeed, I should have thought of that immediately, but I did not. Uh, it does sound cold, doesn't it, if you say it? If you think about it without thinking about the spelling. Rorschach pattern is an ink blot. Uh, the sort of psychological test, I suppose. Or maybe exercise is a better word. Easy order for a barista. Black coffee, I suppose. Not much to do there. Um, if it's just, I suppose, poured out of a vat anyway. Uh, they play among the reeds. Oboists play among the reed instruments, the reed, the wind section. Okay, cucumber-like, maybe. Cool as a cucumber, some say. That's how we're solving this crossword. Bubbling away would be a boil on a on a stove top, for instance. Dictionary offerings are definitions. And dictionary being abbreviated means the answer will, too, be abbreviated. Definitions, defs. Loopy could be daft. Oh, you're, you're loopy, you're daft. Oops, not doft. Increase as a pot. Add to a pot. Um, in a, in a, um, a gambling context, I assume this means. And the pot of uh, potential winnings. Overstep one's bounds is to... Uh, why don't I see what this is? Trespass. Sorry, yes, okay. <laughs> All right, to overstep one's bound is, is to trespass. You could literally overstep the bounds of a property, or metaphorically overstep your bounds. 
and a verse that exalts its subject is the official poetic form of the New York Times crossword, the ode. And someone should do a theme sometime that somehow it has, I don't know, four or five lines, long answers in the puzzle, these sort of, you know, these positions, these kind of long long answers, and it, and it composes an ode to the New York Times crossword. That would be an appropriate <laughs> theme construction. It would be tricky, I'm sure, to construct. All right, Blank Dobby, Abu Dhabi, and Easy on Me Singer 2021. I have not heard of this song, I don't think, but I'm guessing in five letters it might be Adele. I want to check that because I, I have no certainty about that whatsoever. Um, hummus, okay, might be right. Hummus for one is a dip. Feminine suffix, suffix could be N or et. I would want each of those to have an extra N or T. Uh, planes figure replaced by Monticello on U.S. nickels. Oh, a bison. Uh, Monticello was um, Thomas Jefferson's, name of Thomas Jefferson's residence. And I, I do think I've seen bison on, it's been a while since I've seen a nickel actually, but I think I think they do have bison on them. Uh, feminine suffix, oh, S, right, of course, yes. Okay, as in actress, for instance. I don't know why I didn't think of that. Um, surprise win is an upset, and gin flavoring would be slow. Um, you could have slow gin has that uh, uh, fruit. Inventor's protection, a patent would protect an inventor's creation. And... Um, Dollar sign, percentage sign, ampersand, or at sign, each of those is a symbol. And of course, because this clue says uh, it, it's it's choosing between any of these symbols with an or, it's saying we're, we're looking at, for instance, an ampersand or an at sign. Uh, we're only referring to one of them. So the answer will be singular, not plural, even though we're listing several things. So just keep that in mind. If Blank Street Could Talk, 2018 film, if Beale Street Could Talk, um, based on the, the novel of the same name. And I think we missed, skipped this answer. Yes, we did. Exclamation of epiphany. <laughs> Aha, that's the sort of thing we we think when um, understanding what's going on in a crossword theme. And actually, having said that, it, it occurs to me that I suspect black coffee will be a theme answer because it's a it's just a long answer that's in the sort of position in the grid where theme answers are usually disposed. I mean, I, I don't have any specific reason for thinking that, but also, <laughs> honestly, it could be BC or, or black. It could be colors or, I mean, it could be anything, but this, feel, this, this feels like a theme answer to me. But anyway, we'll have to see. Take me aside, maybe? Is that? It is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury. Yes, that is indeed a Shakespeare quotation. So aside looks maybe a little more likely. Oscar-winning film sit, set partly in Iran. Um, I don't know. No, it, it must be Argo. So this isn't a side. Take me... Oh, take me as I am. That makes much more sense than take me aside. Okay, so the film... Okay, so the film is indeed is Argo. And water power informally is hydroelectric power. Hydro, well, hydro for short, hydroelectric. Um, compadre is an amigo and ocean vertebrate with a round translucent body, a, a moon shark. Okay, now I would have assumed this to be a theme answer as well. Is there any way that black coffee and moon shark are connected? Maybe, I don't know, maybe these aren't theme clues. Moon shark, black coffee. I don't know. I could be on the wrong track. Outskirts of the outskirts would be the boonies, the boondocks, and uh, sort of um, slangy way to refer to the boondocks, the kind of outskirts of the outskirts, I guess it says. Book-loving Disney princess in a yellow gown. Oh, this isn't Moon Shark. Moon Whale? Because presumably this is Belle from Beauty and the Beast. Moon Whale? PSAT takers often. No, not not that either. Um, PSAT takers often. Juniors? JRs, I think. This is the practiced, practiced standardized achievement test. Um, juniors being the penultimate grade in American secondary education. 
Uh, furious would be irate. Bit of lightning would be a bolt of lightning. Coil in a mattress is a bed something, bed spring. Um, whirlpool is an eddy, a little whirlpool, a little, um, you know, eddy. <laughs> Can't think of any extra words. Uh, jello shapers are molds, jello molds. Um, jelly molds, you could also say more generically without the brand name. Late singer with a food name, meatloaf. Oh, okay. So moon, moon jelly. So jellyfish. Oh, that makes sense. A round translucent body. I didn't really think very hard about the round, round translucent body, did I? So black coffee, moon jelly. Well, coffee and jelly are both food items potentially, or, or, or I mean, yeah, coffee is drink, but they're both con consume comestibles and you eat them or drink them. Uh, lifelessly dull is sterile. Slushy summer treat could be an icy. That's another um, brand name for a drink in this case. Defeatist's assertion is I can't. And bookish shorts are, sorts are nerds. Flappers in a gaggle are geese, a gaggle of geese. That is the word. No, it was goose, I suppose, that defeated me in a recent wordle. That was very frustrating. Uh, trumpets sound as a blare, the blare of trumpets. Operator of a stud farm is a... Don't know. Prevailing tendency are tendencies are trends. So stud farms. I mean, it's going to be cattle. What is this? Uh, community card between flop and river in Hold'em. Oh, someone has <laughs> someone has explained this to me. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to whoever it was. I can't remember. Go a courting. Maybe woo you woo somebody. Or you sue them, maybe, because there's a question mark here indicating a bit of pun or wordplay. So perhaps courting means not the obvious. The obvious thing here would be you woo somebody, you're, you're courting them. But I think perhaps it refers to a court of law because we're looking for something um, uh, punny or, or a bit of wordplay. Also, I just realized we never saw this. The Wasteland author's monogram, yes, T.S. Eliot, the, the writer of The Wasteland, um, the poem. Okay, anyway, let's just look elsewhere. Sherwood Forest from the Robin Hood uh, legend. It's connected to the tibia is the fibia, uh, relevant bone, and sheepish is ovine, literally like uh, or of sheep. Intel mission would be recon, reconnaissance. So uh, intel short for intelligence and recon short for reconnaissance. So we're matching the sort of tenor of these words. Um, and... Here we, we'll just look at our what we've filled out through crosses. Big nights before big days are eaves. Oh, so I was wrong about fibia. Femur, femur, not fibia. Okay. So the femur, the big, that big, big leg bone. And a live one might be hot, a mic, a microphone. It's a good thing I looked at these. Um, card player's call would be Uno in the game of the same name. And Kylo Blank of Star Wars is Kylo Ren, the character from the recent Star Wars films. Artist Henri Toulouse Lautrec. Oh no. I guess I don't remember how to spell that. Um let's look at the crosses. Rights Advocacy Organization. The ACLU, presumably, the American Civil Liberties Union Liberties Union. Here we have robust would be hailer, more hail, more hail and hearty, you might say. Serviceable is of use. And letter after pi is row. So here we have, okay. All right, I was right about which clues were uh, thematic. Genre with a hall of fame in Cleveland, or what can follow the respective halves of 1733 and 40 across. Rock and roll. Ah. Black rock and coffee roll. Moon rock and jelly roll. There we go. And what was the other one? Uh 33, yes, bedrock and spring roll. <laughs> Very clever. Uh, wow, that really, that did that did bring, a, bring to mind the exclamation of epiphany. Aha, I did not, I just could not understand what the relationship between black coffee and moon jelly is. But uh, that's very clever. Okay. It's very clever and sort of just silly and absurd in a way. Um, to gawk is to stare. Some four-stringed instruments, for short, are ukes, ukuleles. Ah, here we go. Toulouse-Lautrec. There we go. 
All right, we've I forgot the U. That was uh, oversight on my part. Uh, the turn must be uh, yes. The community card between the flop and the river. The flop, the turn, the river. I, I probably won't remember that next time without crosses, but I remembered it just enough to for it to ring a bell to produce the moment of epiphany. Aha! Exclamation of epiphany. Operator of a stud farm is a breeder. There we go. Of course, because stud would refer to a bre- a breeding uh, to breeding cattle. So that makes sense. Uh, Motley Crew, the uh, rock and roll band, actually, appropriately enough. Crossing with rock and roll. And common conjunctions are ors. There's the word or, pluralized. John of Salisbury. Um, I'm not sure offhand. And then acid is LSD. Pisa dough would be euros, the currency used in, in Italy as a member of the eurozone. And uh, put new turf down. Oh, I see. John of John, Sorry, okay. I was trying to think of a name. In this case, Salisbury is just being used to indicate that we're, well, where I am, I suppose, here in the UK, and we're referring to a British term for John for a toilet, the loo. And so here to put new down new turf on is to resod, I don't know, a yard or something like that. And there we go. And there's the puzzle. We had, we had the um, uh, the exclamation of epiphany, aha, which absolutely struck me when we found the rock and roll answer. So we had black coffee, bed spring, moon jelly, all of which um, pair in parts to rock and roll. So black rock and coffee roll, bed rock and spring roll, moon rock and jelly roll. Um, comprising our tripartite theme uh, and <laughs> a very clever and very silly debut, I would say, for Robert Watt. Just one of those kind of slightly absurdist themes that doesn't, it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't really particularly mean anything. It's just an observation about some phrases meshing in a consistent way with a completely unrelated phrase. And um, I think with the, <laughs> the thousands of New York Times puzzles that have been published to date, they're really, you, you have to sometimes dip into the absurd, I think, in order to come up with new theme ideas. So I think well done to Robert Wan for um, digging out that bit of nonsense. I appreciate it. And it did indeed prompt the exclamation of epiphany. And that's that for today's puzzle. So we can now read just a few from yesterday that people left on that video. I think that looks there look to be only two. Um, so I'm sorry if I missed some. And actually, neither of these was a correction necessarily. But here was an interesting observation from Ben Ward, who said, at least a couple of clues in yesterday's puzzle seem to be a subtle nod to the puzzle's uh, card suit theme. This was, our, uh, this was our jump suit theme with the four suits of the standard deck of playing cards. We had kings and queens and the band names, um, and Princess Diana, known as the Queen of Hearts, in Fifty Across. Well, that's that's interesting. I I don't think that ever would have occurred to me. But yes, Princess Diana was known as as uh, as Queen of Hearts, and um, that is of course one of the one of the clues. And then kings and queens apparently in there as well. So we had sort of playing card related a, a few light tips, and you get that sometimes with themes where the you wouldn't consider those part of the theme, but they're nods to the theme. So. Uh, well spotted by Ben Ward. And then uh, Shivy G asked, I'd love to hear more about Lyle's Law. You mentioned it briefly here. I googled it and didn't find anything. Maybe we can maybe we can somehow introduce this as a bit of the of the crossword solving lexicon. That would be fun. Um, I'm not surprised you can't find anything on Google about it, because as far as I'm aware, it has only been referenced in by me in these videos. It refers to a viewer of these um, crosswords who posted under the name Lyle, um, who observed that actually this is a perfect, well, today's puzzle is a good example of it. So here, I'm sorry, I'm going to reveal today's puzzle and I know it's been blocked out. So I'm giving you fair warning, skip ahead. There are, there is the little table of contents that I always put in the timeline of these videos. So you can skip to the epilogue and I will have re blanked out the, uh, this puzzle if you don't want to see it. Anyway, here we go. So you can see in today's puzzle, the um, the revealer, which is the 
central theme that sort of ties, sorry, the central answer that, and clue that ties the rest of the theme together. In this case, it's the one whose answer is rock and roll. This is, this is what we call the revealer. And Lyle, the commenter, observed that it seems to be the case that generally speaking, more often than not, the revealer is found in essentially the same part of the grid, toward, in, in the sort of southeastern quadrant of the grid, in specifically in the across clues generally. And that is almost always the case. It isn't always the case, but it is the case a very high percentage of the time. And we can see this is in the absolute classical position for the revealer, which is that it abuts the eastern perimeter of the grid. And in fact, it is specifically three cells north of the southern border in the acrosses. This is the canonical position for the revealer as predicted by uh, Lyle's Law. I think I've embellished Lyle's Law a bit, adding that bit about three cells uh, north, specifically that kind of thing. But the idea, the general idea was pointed out by Lyle, and so I call that Lyle's Law. Um, I suppose it's not really a law, but it's, it's uh, I, I like law because it's a um, alliterative. It's more of, a, Lyle's tendency might be a, a more accurate uh, description, but but I like Lyle's Law for the alliteration. Anyway, uh, that's where that comes from. It was just a, it was a comment by a viewer of these videos. So I will reintroduce the spoiler wall there. And that's that for today's video. Thank you for joining me. And I'll be back tomorrow for the Wednesday puzzle where we might get a little bit of a step up in difficulty. So do join me for that. It'll still be a themed puzzle. And until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Tuesday. Take care. Mm -hmm.